Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Knobs. We hope and pray that you stay safe and well at your place today. Our prayers go to the medical professionals who are working hard in the front line at this very challenging time. May God provide everything they need. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, May the 3rd where we are invited to the story of Jesus when he said, I am the Good Shepherd. May we believe Jesus is the Good Shepherd. May we find Jesus at every corner of our lives. In our service, please welcome Ross Ingalls, our music director from Pickering, Jane Bossert, the Christian Education Coordinator from Oshawa, as well as Peter Zhang, our lay reader. Now I'd like to invite Peter to take us through lighting the Christ candle as well as the memorial candle. We will light the Christ candle to symbolize the God is with us. We will light the memorial candle to remember everyone who is affected by the pandemic. Please join with me in the call to worship in the bold prints on your screen. We gather together in the presence of our shepherd God who calls us each by name, who restores our souls, who leads us in the way of righteousness, and whose goodness and love never stop pursuing us. This is the God we have come to worship. Our opening hymn is from Voice United, hymn number 748, God is my shepherd.
Let us continue in the opening prayer. In the dark and cloudy day that we were scattered, we sought you out, O God, to deliver us from places of chaos, devastation, panic, and fear. Lord, you are the Good Shepherd. We pray that our lives would be planted near you, that we would draw nourishment from you, that we would not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but that our delight would be you, in your truth, in your grace, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer in the language of your choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Assurance of God's grace from John chapter 10, verse 1 to 10. Money comes and goes, people come and go, but through it all one remains. The Lord is there when we are broken and when we are whole. The Lord knows every detail of our lives and still loves each one of us unconditionally. Jesus said, I came that may you may have life and have it abundantly. People come and go, but Jesus comes and stays. Thanks be to God. Children's hymn today is from More Voices, hymn number 126, Are You a Shepherd? Followed by The Moment of Discovery by Jane. Yes, you are shepherd. Hey. 
United Church, Miss Jane here. Rather, should I say good evening? When I'm taping this, it's about seven o'clock, I think. Wanted to do it outside because I want to share with you uh, something a little special. Winston, Winston, come here. Herbie, Herbie, good boy. Good boy, Herbie. Okay, Herbie, up. Oh, good. Good boy. <gasps> good boy, Herbie. There's a treat for you. Winston, come. Winston. Good boy. That's a very, come here. Good boy. Can you sit? Sit for mom. Sit for mom. Good boy. Can you speak? Can you speak? Look at me. Can you speak? Winston, speak for mom. Speak. Oh, good try. Give me paw instead. Good boy. Here you go. <laughs> I wanted to share <laughs> my two boys with you. Because as I'm thinking this week, I'm thinking about the story of the Good Shepherd. This is as close as I'm going to be to being a shepherd. <laughs> but with two Newfie dogs, it feels like a big flock of sheep half the time. <laughs> My house is full with uh, felines and two canines. And I love them dearly. Um, and what I wanted to share and show with you right there is that my two boys especially know me. And they know my voice. They know... Um, that I protect them, that I care for them, that I feed them, that I clean up after them, that we have fun together, we go for walks. They know that they are loved by me. And that caught me thinking, you know, how precious animals are. How many of you have a pet? Uh, you probably love them just as if they are uh, a big part of the family, and they are. Uh, they're really special. They have a special place in our hearts, don't they? Because they just want to be loved and show you their love and their loyalty. And I think of that with the Good Shepherd, and that's what we're talking about this morning uh, in the songs that we're singing and in the scripture we're listening to and in Reverend Bright's message to us, and that God sent us Jesus as our Good Shepherd, and so much so that he laid down his life for us, and that is pretty amazing to know that you have somebody who knows us so well, who knows our every thought and knows when we need protecting and care and comfort, knows when to carry us when we're down. Especially in times like this, our Good Shepherd is with us, always with us. It got me thinking though a little bit further about, you know, Jesus who loves me so much and he loves you so much. I love him too, but do I know him? Do I hear him? Do I know his voice when he's talking to me? Or am I like a lost little sheep sometimes who just goes off and wanders on my own? But when I do, Jesus is always there to find me and to bring me back, which is pretty amazing. I'm very thankful for that. And I know if my boys here were off to wander or anywhere, I'd be right there looking for them and making sure to bring them home. This week, my friends, my prayer for you is to listen to Jesus' voice. Listen and know what he's saying to you. Feel his love, feel his grace and his strength. And if you have an animal, give it an extra hug and a squeeze and some love. Have a wonderful week, my friends. God's blessings. God's of reading today is John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. I will read it in Mandarin. 我实实在在地告诉你们,人进羊圈,不从门进去,到从别处爬进去,那人就是贼,就是强盗。从门进去的才是羊的牧人
必要逃跑。”耶稣将这比喻告诉他们，但他们不明白所说的是什么意思，所以耶稣又对他们说：“我实实在在的告诉你们，我就是羊的门，凡在我以先来的，都是贼，是强盗。”羊却不听他们，我就是门，凡从我进来的，必然得救，并且出入得草吃。盗贼来，无非是要偷窃、杀害、毁坏；我来了，是要叫羊得生命，并且得得更丰盛。Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I heard about this lady. She went to church one Sunday morning. The usher came up to her and said, "Ma'am, where would you like to sit?" The lady said, "Well, I'd like to sit in the very first pew today." The man said, "Well, you probably don't want to do that. Our pastor is very boring." Paul, the lady said, "Sir, do you know who I am?" He said, "No." She said, "I am the pastor's mother." Didn't know what to do. The man said, "Ma'am, do you know who I am?" She said, "No." He said, "Thank God," and he walked away. Do you know who I am? It's a question we sometimes use to remind people of who we really are. The term "I am" relating to God. Appears over three hundred times in the Bible. Three hundred times, God was constantly asking people, "Do you know who I am?" Including one incident in the Book of Exodus, chapter three, fourteen, where Moses and God were having a conversation. Moses was wondering, "What should I say if they ask me who sent me?" What's your name? And God responds, "Tell them I am has sent you. I am who I am." That's where we get the term for God's name, Yahweh. I am who I am. In the exposition of Exodus three fourteen, theologians Steve Garrick and Ronald Bain tell. This God's name reveals the unchanging, eternal nature of God. God does not change. God does not become. God is, and God is the same that ever He was. They say. Jesus also used the term "I am" seven times in the Gospel of John. Seven times. We all know、uh, what Jesus said in John's Gospel. Jesus said, "I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door and the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And lastly, I am the vine. To tell us." You are the branches. One thing we learn from the way Jesus describes himself is what comes, what follows this two simple word can determine what kind of life we can live. God likes to refer to Himself not with a verb, but but playing the role of a name. In so doing. It's impossible to speak of God in terms of what He used to be, or what He will become, because God's nature is "I am who I am." Likewise, there are times where we have to be reminded of who we are, starting with our name. Or simple words. What kind of words are coming out of your mouth today when you say "I am"? Do you say "I am blessed," "I'm strong," "I'm healthy," or do you say "I am weak," "I am terrible"? 
I am slow? The truth is, what follows the I am will always come looking for us. Most of us will never go up to another person at least to their face and criticize them. But sometimes, and I feel more and more people nowadays, have no problem criticizing themselves. My point is we already have enough problems, issues in our life that come against us. We should never go against ourselves. For example, if my wife say, Honey, I can't believe I look like this. I'm so wrinkled. And if she ever turned to me and say, Am I? Now, what follows after you are will determine what kind of destiny I would be in. I value my life. John chapter 10, Jesus makes these two statements about himself. He said, I am the door. In a different translation, I am the gate. And he also said, I am the good shepherd. The word door is probably used 400 times in the Bible. Doors are metaphors for important, a lot of, a lot of important uh, things in our life. Sometimes God opens doors and shuts doors, we know. We have doors all the time in our lives, and we don't even realize how many doors we walk through daily. How many doors are in your home? Sliding door, front door, basement door. I was watching the CTV news the other day. What about that window at the senior home? The family members are waving or trying to touch through the window the family members. But they can't. Only see, only see their their faces. A door can be an entrance or can be an exit. Door is a bridge or something to, to something great or it can be a barrier. The door can say welcome or you're not welcome. It represents acceptance or rejection. It can keep things separate and protect us. And Jesus said, I am the door. So many implications to how doors are used in our lives. The Bible is also a door to what God is like. Or the Bible also mirrors what we really are like. To many disciples, Jesus was the gate. Jesus was the door. Peter the fisherman the average Joe became the leader of the only church Church through that gate. Thomas the doubter became the believer through the door. Mary went through the door and became the first resurrection preacher. They went through that door. They were like, I am what I'm used to be. I am what I might have been, what I... Should have been, but they went through that door and they became, I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. Very powerful statement when we say, I am what God says I am. Jesus went on to say, I am the good shepherd. A true shepherd sacrifices his or her life through for the flock, Jesus went on to say. A highly, on the other hand, sacrifices the flock for himself. How do we identify this is a good shepherd or a hireling? Easy, Jesus says. Wait until the wolf comes. If the wolf comes, a true shepherd kills the wolf. But the hireling facilitates the wolf as it kills the flock by his inaction. Not many people know what it's like to be a shepherd nowadays. 
in magazine at the magazine Guardian, Amanda Owens, a shepherdess, runs she runs a two thousand acres with a lot of animals flocked there in England. This thirty nine year old shepherdess, she says, it's a greedy job and unless you can take the wild with Uli, it's probably not for you. It's a lifestyle. The word shepherd is also a verb that describes care of other animals and even people. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Many in the Bible were shepherds. Jacob was a shepherd in the Old Testament. Moses was a shepherd. David started with a shepherd career. And even Peter, remember Jesus said to Peter, Peter, feed my lamb. Shepherds, they know how to fight the wolf, lion, bear that attacked the flock. They know how to stand his or her ground in the face of the enemy, in the face of difficulty. What is the responsibility of a shepherd? Jesus said it's not to please the church, the community, the government, and his friends, but it is to stand up before God and to be the spokesperson. Can we see a good shepherd? in our lives. I think so. We have seen good shepherds who lay down their lives for the flock. The difficulty has come. This pandemic has come. And this difficulty has revealed who are our good shepherds and hirelings? Doctors and nurses, many people working at the grocery store. Interesting, God says to his shepherd in the book of Ezekiel, do not be afraid of their faces. Do not be afraid. God was saying, I will be standing before and with you. As human beings, we all want meaningful relationships. And we want to be known in those meaningful relationships. It's a deep human need. It's natural that we want to feel good about ourselves. I feel like we are important, we are valued, known, accepted for who we are. I wonder what kind of world we would be in if each one of us is like a shepherd. What kind of church it would be, Knox would be, if everyone is like a shepherd. The problem is, we're not always in this shepherd mode. It's very tempting to, be, to become a hireling. We have challenges, we have issues, and worry about so many things. Are people going to accept my idea? What if they walk out on me? It's very tempting to become a hireling. The other day, a, a while ago, I remember this dream. I better call it a nightmare. I was preaching Sunday morning in my dream and half of the congregation got up and walked out of the church. Don't move there. Here's the good news for all of us who are serving, volunteering, working for the sake of good. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. My sheep listens to my voice. Again, back to our lives. Who are the good shepherds? We can, we can see, we can feel, we can, we can understand in our lives today. Who are the good shepherds that lay down their lives for the flock? 
National Post claims healthcare providers are taking mortal risk every day. The second casualty in our healthcare professionals, Arlene Reed, a second Ontario PSW worker, died as she went from home to home, providing care to home where they live. She herself was worried about getting COVID-19. They say home care workers like Reed is in constant danger. She was a good shepherd. Healthcare workers across Canada are making decisions about who will care for their kids if they get sick. Some are moving away from family into rentals. Some are even securing a will. I cannot imagine what comes through their mind as they begin their shift today. The other day, two little kids across uh, the street where we live, they did something, they did write some encouraging messages with their chalk on the sidewalks. It just so happened that uh, we live very close to a local church here in Barrie. I didn't pay attention what they did, but I realized every time doctors and nurses in their uniform passing the sidewalk uh, um, close to our, our place, they stopped and looked at their messages, their encouraging messages, and they, you know, uh, uh, gave a chuckle or five or ten seconds and then they went on so i was wondering what's written on the sidewalk it was nothing special just thank you doctors nurses you're doing a great job what about those doctors and nurses who are were laying down their lives for the flock. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The way God shepherds His people begins with reminding them of who they are, what they are meant to be, not with a verb, but playing the role of a name. What follows the I am will determine the life we choose to live. My question is, what kind of words are coming out of your mouth today when you say, I am? Amen. Let us respond to the message by singing the next hymn from Voices United, hymn number 210, You, Lord, are both Lamb and Shepherd.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we seek to be the sheep of your holy pasture. As we dedicate our offerings, help us to examine carefully the deepest recesses of our own hearts. Guide our ways so that we may share abundantly your love and your compassion with those seeking your pasture. We pray in the name of the risen one. Amen. Please join with me in the prayers of the people. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we are safe and secure. Within your embrace we know that we are precious in your sight. Within your embrace we feel the warmth of family and belonging. Within your embrace, we grow and are nurtured together as one flock, the people of your pasture under your loving care and protection. We bring to you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental, or spiritual health. You are the great healer, and we pray for healing of mind and body for those we now name in the silence of our hearts. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we find justice and peace. We are in a war against COVID-19 together. We know the challenges are enormous yet so are the opportunities. We give thanks for the researchers who are working at breakneck speed to find cure and vaccine. We give thanks for our leaders, federal, provincial, and local, for their dedication to all of us. We give thanks for the providers of our daily needs who go to work in spite of risk. We pray for the well-being of our life savers, for those who are not well, that they recover fully, for those enduring difficulty, that they may overcome their challenges. Good Shepherd, within your embrace we find peace. We pray for our family, friends, all Canadians, the entire world, that they may be safe and may be healed in body and spirit. Lord, you are the Good Shepherd. We pray that our lives would be planted near you, that we draw nourishment from you, and that our delight would be you, in your truth, in your grace, now and forevermore. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Voices United Hymn number 273, The King of Love.
Now, let us go back to where we are. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. May we see and believe Jesus is the Good Shepherd. May we find Jesus at every corner of our lives. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.